Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we'll be talking about the electromagnetic spectrum. It's... Welcome back. Now in the last video I showed you the colors that are given off by different metallic ions when they are burned. And so in today's video, we are going to discuss how those colors fit into a larger scheme. Now just as a quick reminder, uh, color is light, and light is just a specific form of energy. Now how is energy measured? Well, we can put it into something called the electromagnetic spectrum of science. So without further ado, here is the electromagnetic spectrum. Now as you take a look at this, I realize this may not be the most beautifully rendered artistic drawing of the electromagnetic spectrum, but all, all I have to say to that is, Darn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not an artist. Ooh, sorry. Don't know what came over me there. All I was going to say is that it's at least, you know, it's good enough for us to figure out what's going on here. Okay? So our colors are right here in the middle, right? Everybody remembers from, uh, from elementary school, the whole Roy G. Biv, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Well, we can actually expand that out into different forms of energy. So over here on the left, we've got radio waves, and then microwaves, then infrared light, red, right next to the red color. We do our colors in the visible light spectrum. Uh, right above violet is the ultraviolet, and then x-rays, and then finally gamma rays. Okay, so as we look at this spectrum, we need to start measuring the different variables that are involved in the electromagnetic spectrum. Now there are three variables. The first one is frequency. Now frequency, for lack of a better way to describe it, is simply the speed of a wave, right? So if I were to stand in one spot, and I counted how many waves passed by me in one second, that would be the frequency. So over here on the left, you can see that things are pretty spread out and they're not really passing by all that quickly. So our frequency, abbreviated by a lowercase f, is pretty low right here. Over on the right hand side, uh, you can see how they're really close together and they're actually moving much more quickly. So therefore, our frequency here is pretty high. Okay, the next variable is wavelength. Now wavelength, well that's simply the length of a wave, right? Uh, and so wavelength is abbreviated with the Greek letter lambda right here. It looks kind of like an upside down Y, so go ahead and put that over here as well. Now over here you can see that the waves are very spread out. There's a long distance in between each wave. So we can say that we have long wavelengths over here, and here since they're very close together, we have short wavelengths, okay? Um, and then our last variable is energy. Now we can't exactly see energy when we look at the spectrum, but we can figure it out based on frequency and wavelength, all right? Now energy is abbreviated with a capital E right there, okay? So if we have a low frequency, so they're moving pretty slowly, and a long wavelength, so they're spread out, well, it's pretty easy to understand how we're going to have a low amount of energy on this side. Now, over on the other, as you can see, we've got frequency is pretty high, so they're moving pretty quickly. Uh, the wavelength is very short, they're really close together, so they're moving a lot more, much more quickly. So you can easily understand how energy is pretty high over on that side, okay? So now what we need to do is compare the left to the right. So we're going to start by comparing frequency and wavelength. So we can see here that frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. So if they're going opposite of each other, we can say that frequency and wavelength are inversely related. Okay? Uh, the next comparison is frequency and energy, so we can see that frequency and energy go in the same direction, right? So up and up, so that means that they are directly related. 
All right, and our last comparison is wavelength and energy. All right, so wavelength goes up, energy goes down. So that is opposite. So we've got an inverse relationship right here. So they are inversely related. All right, so there you go. That is the basics of the electromagnetic spectrum. If you have any further questions, please post them below. Uh, if this is your first time viewing, thank you so much. Please hit subscribe and join us on this journey called chemistry. And just remember, I'm not Dan, and may the force be with you. Engage. Waiting on a train.